Hey there Philistines, I'm Pruitt and this is Jim Davis and I hope you're ready because we're about to go straight David on that ass by slinging some nuggets of wisdom at your noggin. We're going to take down the Goliath on WebDM. All right, Jim, let's talk about the big boys and girls in the room. Talk about them Goliaths, yo. Oh, yeah. I thought we might have been talking about minotaurs or bugbears or orcs or dragonborn or half-orcs or perhaps even mountain dwarves. Or any Goliaths. Of, yeah. We're talking about. Yes. Any of the others that are big and have <laughs> athletic or natural athlete. The first thing I think of when I think of Goliath is Grog, right? I would think that the fact that there's a Goliath barbarian in the first season mm -hmm. of... Uh, critical Role, the first campaign of Critical Role that that would boost the popularity of them a bit. Mm -hmm. But what about the story of David and Goliath, Jim? Oh, I mean, like th this is kind of the D and D thing, though, right? Yeah, like they yeah. take a one thing and sort of like make a whole people out of it. You know, whether uh -huh. it's Medusa or Goliath or whatever. Are your Goliaths a race of semi-divine giants that uh, escaped the Great Flood and now live in relative obscurity in your ancient Bronze Age setting? Maybe. I don't know. Where would they escape to? <laughs> Probably the mountains. And that's where they are from that's now. They are now. The thing about Goliaths conceptually, I, I do have a tough time with, with them as a and d, d race because it's like they they're you guys are just like gray humans, big gray humans, kind of. Yes, the people that really want to play a giant but aren't allowed to by their DM. I mean, that's how I basically use them. You, you Goliath, if you want to be a half ogre, half giant, mole, ogrillion, you know, whatever yeah. it is, uh, Goliath is sort of the catch-all uh, for it. But I, I usually also like add other things on to kind of uh, fla reflavor them a bit. I think for me, Goliath poses a problem because I can't think of like their place in D&D's lore, right? Like, I know they, they pop up sometime around 3rd edition as one of the many playable options in that. They, they continued on through 4th and then appear in 5th edition with the Elemental Evil uh, Player's Guide, but they step on too many of the Mountain Dwarf and Earth Ganassi's toes <laughs> for me to be like, I can, you know, solidly find a, a place for you in my, in my worlds, which is why I use them as more like flavorless, just mechanical packages. Yeah. And then you, you add on your own, you know. Maybe the giants beseech the Titans for, for servants of their own. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the Titans gift them with their children, which yeah. are Goliaths, Goliaths which sure. are, you know, do our bidding, do our, do all the small stuff, interact with the small peoples because yeah. they're scared of us. We don't want to step on them. Sure, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Uh, but go that. forth and uh, and do our bidding. Yeah, uh, that that kind of thing. I mean, the way that they're they're kind of presented in the book as this very like you know they're driven by competition. They they love games of of strength and prowess. Oh sure, sure. but they're also um, kind of unforgiving in that. Yes. Yeah. There's I mean, a they, sort of like hard as the, cruelty. Their heart is the mountain stone that they are hewn from, almost. Mm -hmm. And if you come up short, then you're gone. You're an outcast, uh, which is probably where most adventuring Goliaths would have to come from. I would imagine that most of them do come from the, that outcast. Sort of like you, you've either done something to your to your people that, mm -hmm. have, that have caused them to kick you out. You yourself are are sort of like driven by a need to go beyond these mm -hmm. uh, high alpine pastures. And I think it's that. I think it's like the basis of that. It's like, all right, what else? Like, surely that can't be it. And, and mm -hmm. like, when I read about it, I'm sort of like, that sounds like a really, like, how have they survived if they're like hyper individualist, like competitive people who, you know, oh, you let us down once, you're out of the tribe forever. Mm -hmm. Like you're gone. They almost feel like caricatures and it's like, well, I, I, want, I want more almost, like show yeah. me more complexity to them. Well, first off, I love that most of the people that leave are probably rules as intended people, and the oh, yeah, are yeah. supposed to be more rules as written. Right, yeah, fair play. Because uh, we're gonna have fair play. play. But it also, that, that very strict adherence to, you know, just kind of like, the, the, the playing field and, and whatever. They're with, like real with the meritocratic, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I could also see like a, almost like a Bushido code. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I mean, like it's, you step outside the bounds, you've dishonored yourself. Now you're Ronin. Get out. You yeah. Know? yeah. Especially if you like take Goliath and you, you like remove the need for them to be like a biologically distinct peoples. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And instead maybe Goliaths are something you become. You know, maybe Goliath is what happens to a, per a human when they they live too long near maybe the earth elemental nodes or something, or mm -hmm. they, um, you know, the, the the mountain herders or whatever. The you know, occasionally you know, 
every couple of seasons, uh, you know, a few of them go missing and, 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 you know, it's not really worth it to try to find them because it's the mountain and all that other stuff. And yeah. instead, it's, they're not so much missing as they've become Goliath. They've become yeah. of the mountain and they seek each other out to live in these sort of like almost aesthetic communities that have strict rules for behavior and, and the like because they find themselves changed by the magic of the, the mountain. Yeah. Like I could see something like that where it's it's a thing like you become. Now all you did is make me think of Tormund Giants Bane and whatever, there's just humans that get yes. lost on mountain yeah. trails uh -huh. and get suckled at the teats of giants. For one. Right. And uh, because of all that giant's milk, you're just bigger. You're you know? just bigger, and yeah. Of course he didn't adhere to the rules, so he got kicked out. Got, yeah, he did. And he's back out. with the wildlings. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, maybe he's just a Goliath. I mean, you could see him like that. They yeah. could be more like wildlings. They're sort of like people who have abandoned the ways of civilization. They they have chosen to live this uh, life of harsh survival because they see it as more, I don't know, closely aligned with what the gods want for mm -hmm. people. Or it's uh, it's maybe it's a philosophical thing. It, 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 they're they adhere to a certain ideology or, or philosophy that necessitates them living in these remote places where life is harsh and they have to constantly struggle to survive. Maybe it's an act of devotion. Maybe it, it, uh, it powers some kind of um, you know, magic in them. Maybe that's how they get so big and strong is, mm -hmm. is they go off to these places and learn to live by themselves. And, and it's about self-mastery, conquering your own limitations uh, through conquering the wilderness. Like a lot of things in d and I, I find that like their portrayal so far, uh, and, and at least in this edition, it's like, it's just a little one note. And like, I mean, I'm sure if you're starting out and you just want like a big, uncomplicated uh, option for your barbarian or your warrior, and you don't want to look like a monster, mm -hmm. then you can pick a Goliath and you know, that. You know, that's it. You know, their abilities, like you already said, they're they're a, another strength con, which, you know, plus Certainly. two strength, plus one con, that's it's another great option for fighters. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Barbarians, it, it, the, any kind of melee like, yeah, or, yeah. or martial type. And they're, of course, also natural <laughs> athletes, so they get that proficiency oh, sure. in, in athletics. Yeah. The one ability I do really like, Stone's Endurance, uh, a reaction uh, to reduce damage that's coming in, so you can reduce it by a D12 plus your con mod. Yeah. Uh, and that's like a, you know, refreshes on a short rest. Yeah. So I, it, it, it's like the opposite of second wind. So when you have oh yeah, that yeah. and second wind, so sure, you're both reducing yeah, yeah. damage and then getting some hit points back, that couples very well with fighter. It couples very well well with fighter, and and I don't think second wind takes an inaction at all, does it? It's just no, second wind is a bonus. action. It's a bonus action. So I think, and so this would be a reaction. So you mm -hmm. can do them at least in sort of more or less the same round. My thing with stones endurance is. Um, that I think it should just be usable more often. <laughs> or yeah. or should provide just a flat bonus that's always there. Like maybe Stone's Endurance is something like uh, you get your constitution mod in damage reduction. Probably for a while it's gonna be the equivalent of, or even less than what you'd get with say Heavy Armor Master. But as you go up in levels, I mean they do say that their skin is textured and has the appearance of and qualities of stone. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that that's, I mean like, I don't know. that. I don't think that that's a big deal. Maybe half the mod, you know, mm -hmm. like so you at least uh, you know you don't end up knocking off five points for every attack yeah. when you get to twenty. But I, I, it's the fact that it's kind of limited. The fact that you can't use it multiple times in a fight uh, is what the big thing for me is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think you know it's not that it's bad. I just yeah, I want more well, of it. I will say though, it is pretty. <laughs> it is pretty fun to get hit in the face with a sword and then roll it and be like, "Yeah, you hit me in the face," and it, 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 it doesn't do anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd almost be tempted to say, "Do you do you roll max? Then it might break the weapon." Yeah, you so know, you just, <laughs> you just bite through it to finish out the abilities. Yeah. Uh, that uh, just like oh. most of the others, they got powerful builds, so oh, yeah. count as one size larger. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's the be all end all for big big races. <laughs> and then the last one, which is is one of those abilities that's like kind of odd. If you, you it, I don't really usually see. See this, uh -huh, but uh -huh. just the mountain-born being yeah. acclimated to high altitude and cold climates. Yes, like yeah. I, like most DMs, like I never really see them use this. Well, like I mean, the, like the, if you're not traveling yeah. above twenty thousand feet, then you then you never will. And yeah, <laughs> and it's kind of like the Triton's ability, right? The Triton has this ability that allows them to withstand the pressure, the crushing pressures of the depths, the cold that you find down there. But then there's like not necessarily a lot of like guidance for that usually it's translated into exhaustion or maybe some cold damage but 
extreme cold is in the DMG. It's a part of the weather, uh, you know, the section on exploring the wilderness and weather patterns and the like. And it's a ribbon ability in some campaigns and in other campaigns, it's the only way they could function. Yeah. And all the other classes are having to take more extreme precautions to say, climb to that mountain top temple that they're supposed to go to mm -hmm. or uh you know yeah there's a cave that that uh will, will will take us to this powerful oracle that we need but you've got to like climb the mountain yeah. to get there and it's not like a simple athletics check it's going to be multiple you know skill That's challenges right. maybe something That's that resembles a complex trap <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's an adventure in and of itself, and yet here we've got a, someone who's like naturally athletic, mountain born. They, they're probably just going to be uh, better at it. It's entirely campaign dependent, but you could be looking at, yeah, I don't have to worry about suffering levels of exhaustion while we're climbing up this mountain. When it comes to concepts, what I, because I, I played a few Goliaths uh, in my day, yeah, and two of them have been monks because when I look at this package, like I imagine like top of the mountain, like yep. monasteries uh -huh, uh -huh, with these definitely. giant fucking fighters that are breaking boulders with their fists and their heads yep. and going through all these these tests yep. and testing their endurance and their fighting prowess. Oh, and yeah. of course they're going to use their fists. Oh yeah. Um, but like, I just, that's what I imagine. You know, I've done a couple of monks. One was... Uh, was Rise of Tiamat. Yeah, yeah it was Rise of Tiamat. Mala, yeah. um, was, she, was, she was kind of... Um, my second character for Aristides, because yes, since yeah. he was not a combatant at all, really. I was just like, well, he needs somebody, so he hired a bodyguard named yes. Nala. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah. was a mountain-born, you know, monk. And they eventually got together and 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 got married and uh, oh. retired together to their to his this, his observatory. Uh, his observatory. Uh -huh. um, and that was fun. We played a text campaign. Yes, we did play a play by brother. post. I'm so sad that the stone sorcerer does not exist in official. I will for one, right? Like that's just a shame. Um, because <laughs> damn, that's a good gish build. And let yeah. me tell you something, Goliath is perfect for it. Now, yes, yeah, it was really fun. It, you know, it doesn't have a charisma bonus, but with the strength and the con there, and stone sorcerer gave those extra hit points. You know, when you couple that with like booming blade, yeah. like she was a badass. Yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, and the flavor potential there is really great, and and I think like. Even if you don't have a bonus to your casting stat, like having strong, I mean, just being like sort of a tough, mm -hmm. strong kind of character is not a bad, like platform for a full caster. You yeah, know, it, it 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 might not be the most optimal, but you're a gish. Like most of your spells don't affect others; they affect you and make mm -hmm. you hit harder, you know, more durable, that yeah. kind of thing. So it works well. Yeah, and uh, twinning uh, booming blade. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of what, fun. Stone Warhammer. It's a Stone it Warhammer. Yeah. And, you know, just doing all that fun stuff and 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 doing quicken spells and uh -huh. all the meta magic really lends itself to. It, it's fun time. Attack. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's that's how you get two attacks before fifth. You know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Certainly. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And then of course I had another Goliath, uh, a Goliath monk that was more wrestler than monk. But the yeah. idea of a giant kind of bombastic. Like Goliath yeah. that comes into town with a booming voice and a belt around his waist saying, who wants to take it from me? You right. Know, as he goes around <laughs> and challenges everyone to wrestling matches to prove that he's the world champion. I'm thinking of uh, Nerd Arky Dave's character um, from uh, the first season of Saber Dice, Jogo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dave asked me, he's like, oh, you know, what's, you know, can I be a Goliath? What would that what, what's the sort of equivalent of that in this magical city? And uh, I was like, yeah, they're basically half ogres. They're ogrillions, you know. They ogres will can I don't know get with anybody for some reason because this is D and D and everybody's just banging everybody else and there's a lot all of kinds of craziness. Yeah, like there's a lot of begatting, like, yeah. prophylactics. I figured that would be a spell. <laughs> you think it would? Half ogres in uh, the city of uh, Oracala Palantine are either goblinoid ogres, so they're uh, more than likely bugbears or, or hobgoblin ogres, and so have a, they look more like giant orangutans or mm -hmm. uh, or something like that. Uh, and then they're sort of like human ogres, uh, who that would be Goliath. You yeah. Uh, Mull is, uh, from Dark Sun would also be a fit for that, sort of half giants, uh, things like that. Incidentally, if you're like kind of upset about the fact that Frobolgs are not what they used to be, Goliath kind of fits or would be a good... Uh, 
start to uh, to replacing those. Yeah, give, give them that uh, height change ability. But Jogo was uh, one of those characters where I start my like for one, it started changing my opinion about fifth edition as a rule set because Jogo was a barbarian who fought with no weapons, and Dave was just like, no, I'm going to wrestle and use my hands. Like, I still got a good strength bonus. You know, I, I'm just going to punch people and, mm -hmm. and, and we'll deal, you know. And so it was fun to watch someone who was not a monk make an unarmed fighter work. And mm -hmm. I think you would have to do a strength bonus barbarian, you know, kind of build for that. And, and just really lean into the kind of, it's a sweet, <laughs> sort of a sweet idiot yeah. <laughs> who, uh, who'd spent their lives on the street and was now caught up in a bunch of wizard business. And then in my own campaign, uh, Lamb of Future Rivers, I've got Yox, who's a member of the uh, Fellowship of Andrus. And the Fellowship is a group of bards and druids and nature priests and the like that are trying to rebuild the shattered world. And uh, they hire or at least commission um, you know, rangers and, and other uh, wilderness types to keep an eye on their borders. And so Yox was a just good-natured, portrayed him always as just like a, he's always kind of happy, jolly, down for whatever. Uh, yeah, he might be an eight-foot-tall, dual-axe-wielding death machine. But, um, you know, he's not here to hurt you. He's here to, like, have a drink and laugh and share some stories about the wasteland and, and go fight some monsters. Mm -hmm. And so I saw uh, Yox as leaning into that um, love of competition, love of fairness, but we don't hold grudges. We, there's nothing personal. You know, we might be rivals today and tomorrow we'll be allies. Mm -hmm. And, and for him, it's about the moment and, and what you can do in that moment to be your best self, to push yourself, to try to protect the people that you care about. Because I, I see that Goliath attitude of, uh, you know, if you can't take care of yourself, you're out of the tribe is, is rather harsh and not necessarily aligning with what the rest of their philosophy or outlook kind of suggests. Mm -hmm. For Yox, it's more like, oh, you know, well, yeah, every, you know, we should all be as self-sufficient and survive as best we can, but not everybody can do that. And, you know, I'm a big, strong guy. I've got extra time, extra energy. You know, let me, I'll, you know, I'll help out the people who, that aren't able to keep up. Things mm -hmm. like that. That's sort of how I, uh, how I saw. It. I like the idea of like, Goliath, like war cleric, like uh -huh. one that the one that leads everyone into battle and and says the chants and the prayers. I, oh, I sure, see yeah. it, I see him more as shamanistic, which maybe like Druid is a better match. Maybe, yeah, but, I see that. But I don't know, I just, I like Cleric, so. I, I mean, I think Cleric is, is sort of fine for, for a, a more naturalistic d uh, divine figure. A lot of it's just like how you portray it. Like, do you mm -hmm. have a holy symbol or do you have like a bag of totems that you yeah. that you use? I really like that War Cleric would be fun. Tempest would be, could be really fun, sort of like oh. the Storm Caller, the, um, you know, the shaman that lives at the top of the mountain that, that you know, survives the land of snow and wind and, and mm -hmm. rock. Um, I, what are the kind of casters do you think? Like, I'm... A, an earth elementalist is too, like, fun to pass up. Like, yeah. not, not like your gish, but like a, you know, I, I call and speak to stones and, like, shape the earth. Yeah, um, I mean, I could see, like, a, a, a Goliath warlock. Uh, yeah, for sure. You yeah, know, whether it's a hexblade who gets called to another mountain to uh -huh. pick up this weapon of ancient, you know, certainly, certainly power. Yeah, or you know, those Goliaths live up there. There's a lot of caves up there, and maybe you went down the wrong one. Right, and you found yourself in the domain of something else. Something else. And yeah, and maybe you had to make a deal to get out of there. All right, I can show you how to get out. I can show you how to get out. Come on, that's where you go. So yeah, I, that's... sign this map, please. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> whether it's, it's uh, Thorisdun, sort of the uh, you know who lies trapped under the mountain and uh, schemes to escape its prison, or it's uh, you know you're taking your uh, page from a little Clark Ashton Smith and you're traveling through the layers of these chthonic underworld deities and powers, and and one of them maybe we'll stop sending you on errands and, and maybe you'll you'll actually escape this place, but you're not gonna escape it without being changed. I really like that. The the entrance to the underworld is at the top of this mountain and mm -hmm. someone and you, you know, escaped there and something contacted you. That's, yes. What about Goliaths is like Neanderthals? And well like that's a trope in some fantasies or like there's the existence of cave peoples. Yeah, yeah, around. yeah. Uh, I was I was thinking about that. Um, that would be that would be a lot of fun, or um, thinking about Goliaths as what if they came from somewhere else uh -huh. because they were the small race there. Oh sure, they're like the they, smallest of all the giants. They're right? the smallest of the giants, and they came from the lands of the giants here just because they were tired of being the small. 
the small fry. Sure, yeah, and yeah. and just kind of giving a little bit different twist on them, uh, because that to me that can kind of feed into that bit harsher survival of the fittest uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, where they want to come down here and kind of put their will on the <laughs> on the on the on the, on the on the shorter races. Certainly, certainly, you could almost like replace orcs with Goliaths in that regard, right? Yeah. There's a lot of that that overlap between like say dwarves and Goliaths of of, of being created by the giants or mm -hmm. being connected with them. I had a campaign world for a while where a lot of the, the early civilizations of the world were escaped peoples that the giants had created to be servitors. And it was mm -hmm. only after two or three of, of groups of their created uh, enslaved beings escaped and rebelled that the giants uh, went with ogres. Where it's like, well, hopefully mm -hmm. you're just too stupid to figure this out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but you could almost kind of, you could change that narrative a bit. This was, I was a younger man then. Mm -hmm. that was much uh, less... Uh, Compassion in my outlook. What if it's the the dwarves were the first? You know, the 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 giants, uh, you know, create these diminutive rocky creatures uh, that that are there to help them mine and sift through the gems and gold that that are in these uh, you know the, these uh, giant mines. But the dwarves were given too much freedom, or the dwarves were contacted by something who helped them escape, or whatever. And they're much smaller, so it's hard to keep track of them. Much smaller, yeah. They're maybe like the size of them, gnomes, maybe, them or bigger. even smaller. Yeah. <laughs> let's make them bigger yeah. next time. <laughs> right. And then they made the Goliaths. They could just get into the little nooks and crannies, and we can't find them. Yeah. Uh, or maybe like the Goliaths were there as like their overseers, someone that be you know people who could still giants, but could go into the mines, down yeah. into the deep places, and still whatever. And so. Like orcs are maybe non-existent, and Goliaths take the place of that as the soldiers and servants of the giants. Maybe the enmity and, and animosity that exists between orcs and dwarves is is replaced by an animosity between uh, dwarves and Goliath. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you establish a connection between Goliaths and humans, then that animosity might extend or, or make things more complicated. Those little things are how I like to treat the the various uh, player race options that I'm just going. Mm, I, I don't know. You yeah. know. It's pretty easy for me to find a place for Yonti. They're snake people. Come on, like there's only like yeah. a dozen different ways to fit them into the campaign. Well, see, see now I can't. I do like Yonti, by the way, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, tunnel snakes <laughs> rule. Come on. What you were saying about them being created at the same time, but taking the movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, and Danny DeVito as a basis, yeah. where they were created at one time, and Danny DeVito was was <laughs> gifted all the cunning and intelligence, whereas uh -huh. Arnold Schwarzenegger was gifted all the physical prowess. Oh yeah, yeah. And so that's the source of the anger envy oh you and, can do that and they like, right uh -huh. so then there's that also that greek myth that the people who are two people you know like they've got five limbs and their faces are backwards and so you could almost do like that where goliaths and let's just say halflings right yeah. just to represent two whole parts of a you know two parts of a whole person mm -hmm. that because this is a fantasy world and we can go bash it crazy like live separate lives yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like for every Goliath, there's a halfling, maybe, and 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 they're maybe like you know maybe they share some kind of connection spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, or something. Maybe they adventure together or something. Maybe yeah. they don't. Um, but or maybe there's like a ritual that can, they can undergo at a certain point in their lives to seek union. Yeah. Or something. Like I, I'm to not feel the drawing. Yeah, yeah, they feel Bad the drawing. Way. These two peoples sort of maybe they grow up separately. Maybe they don't or grow up early together and then you split apart, you know, your, you and your other soul half go your separate ways for a while and it's, you know, if you find each other again is when you know it's time for your ritual of joining mm -hmm. uh, or something. In that sense, you can play with like the duality of you know, someone who's small and cunning and, and, and has to be perceptive and resourceful to survive mm -hmm. and then those who are just, you know, they can endure. I even use them for those alternate Ganassi, right? Like if someone was to come up to me and be like, I, I want play like an Earth Ganassi, but I don't necessarily want to use the Earth Ganassi stats, then like, eh, Goliaths, you know, maybe we mix and match some of the abilities and, and find something that you like. So, mm -hmm. maybe we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Options abound. <laughs> Options abound. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week, and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching. 
it fixes you in place. Like you can't, the only, you can move if you were like can like move around, but like things can't necessarily move you. I guess. I don't see why not. This is where third edition had. They would tell you what kind of wind will blow around what size creatures. It says other. Well, okay. It does say if you are the target, you can move up or down as part of your move. Otherwise, you you can use your action to move the target. Never mind. That means the actual levitate. Yes. Which must remain within the spell's range. We use it offensively. You're, you you they don't move at all. It's like I'm gonna put you right here. But if you tie a rope around someone's waist who's levitating, can you not pull them around like they're fucking skiing behind a boat? I guess you could. It doesn't really say that you can't. It doesn't say that you can't. It just sort of is like a... If you can push and pull, yeah. then you should be able to be pulled. But it's like they have to be able to push off of something. If they're weightless, then the spell needs to have like way more to it that like outlines how that works. Mm -hmm. Or it needs to be more explicit about it. I think of it now as like it puts you there. Like that's you stay there. And like if you're the one with the magic, then you can move up or down or around. Or if there's something to... Like but what if a large creature comes out and tries against. to grab you and pull you? That's... I mean, they could do that. They could probably just pull you. So then but what? like, in, term, like <laughs> in terms of the wind, I mean, I think mostly it's just like you're making your life way more complicated by making it weightless. Because it's like if you're worried about the wind and where your levitated targets are going to go, then now you've got to worry about wind speed, direction. Mm -hmm. um, well, see, to me, yeah, it's just like, oh, that cliff is downwind. Yeah, levitate like, let the it, wind take them over and that's and then, the thing is like if you're in it's if they're not weightless then they'd still need it still need to be like a really strong wind though right mm -hmm. like it still need to be almost like a hurricane sized wind to knock a person over and push them that way and that's where like i guess that third edition they could tell you how fast that was and how far you traveled per round when mm -hmm. you were being pushed by it you have to make all that stuff up now i guess the difference is like are you you're floating but not weightless then you would still need to make like you'd still need to be able to like physically lift up the thing like a big like if you're it can lift up to 500 pounds but like i'd still make an ogre roll to pick up 500 pounds you know that's a pretty big thing mm -hmm. so I, that's i think that's what i would do the difference between is it weightless or is it suspended wow and that's a bit that's a to me that's a big because the weightless is like i would say that's a bigger effect than second level because then that, now you can really mess with them like you could just blow on them yeah just, poke them zero g yeah zero yeah g like bubble. is it really that gravity no longer affects them uh and if so what is gravity in your world or like, is there a specific amount of force that is telekinesis holding the person in place yeah yeah well if you're going by an aristotelian view of physics then it's like the levitate spell applies a constant omnidirectional pressure or movement against mm -hmm. them it fixes them there yeah and because uh, otherwise they would be uh you know they want to do what their objects naturally want to do, which is move them a straight line down. Uh, so yeah, you could do something like that where it's like it's just a constant force exerted against it, and then if you exert force in a different direction, then it could overcome the spell. But you'd have to have more force than the spell in that sense. So more than 500 pounds. More than 500 pounds, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, I'm glad we got that out before the show because it's only one ability from mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. races. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 